Okay, with this video, I'm gonna show you how we achieve the working out for what we call the fault current. Um, fault current for a transformer. It's the last question usually on the uh, LET exam. Um, I've got two different examples here because sometimes it can be asked with a diagram with the information already put out on it. Sample for like this simple one, 230 volt, um, on a distribution transformer drawn out the main switchboard and the distribution board. It's probably a little bit simple, but I haven't really seen this in the exam. It's probably represented in the LET um, theory book, but I'm just going to show you where you, this is more. So this is the one you get more into the exam. And this is what I wanted to go through, some of the stuff that you would be need to know and what we don't know. So for example, 230 volt. That applies because we have this thing down here called per phase. Now when we talk about per phase, a phase talks about down to earth, all right? And that's where we're getting these fault currents from here, down to earth. So we don't need the 400 volts. And it says that we have a prospective fault current of 13,900 amps. Now the 500 kVA is amps and volts together, all right? We're not gonna worry about that. We just wanna know the short circuit current down to earth um, at the main switchboard and at the distribution board. So what I'm going to do, just put that there, I'm going to draw out. So what we've got, we've got the transformer, okay, transformer impedance. We've got the main switchboard. And we've got the distribution board. And in between that, we have a resistance of 0 0.0040 in the consumer main. So this is the consumer mains. This is the what we call the sub mains. 0 0.25 of an ohm. Now of the transformer here we have um, 13,990 amps and 230 volts. So what I'm going to do is we're going to work our way down through the working out. And the good thing about this question is you don't need a rule, you don't need anything like a rule book or the cable selection book or anything. It's straight Ohm's law. Now, if we have a look at Ohm's law, just a simple thing, we have V, I, and then we normally have R. We're not using R in here. We're going to replace it with Z, all right? Z is going to be our replacement. And Z is what we call for impedance when they're basically the, the transformers are under load, all right? R is usually a resistance value of something turned off and just has a set resistance on the coil. So transformer impedance equals V, over I, so 230 volts divided by 13,990, all right? Now the answer we're gonna get, if you look at the question over here, it says five decimal places. Work impedance is to five decimal places, so that's what we're gonna look for. The other thing I wanna point out is all calculations must be shown to obtain full marks. That's written on every question, and I get guys leaving unit values and everything off. All right, so anyway, back over here, we have, this is what our answer will run out to. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna do it on a calculator. So we've got 230 divided by 13,990, and that's our V. So there's my five impedances. Zero, then I've got one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna put down the, the one, the six, the four, and the four. One, two, three, four, five. That's my five impedances. Okay, so that is what's related back to the transformer. Now, so I need to work out the current here. Come over here and just zoom in. And I need to work out the amps here, current. They wanna know what the fault current is at the main switchboard and the fault current at the distribution board. Anyway, so the main switchboard equals V over um, Z. So we're gonna have 230 volts over 0 0.1644 in brackets plus 0 0.0040 close brackets. We'll find out what that equals. Okay, so we come back to the here. We go 230 divided by open bracket point zero one six four four plus point zero zero four oh close my bracket 
And the reason we do that in brackets because everything's added to it and then divided into the 240. So I've got 11,252.4 amps. And I only need the 0.4. I don't need 4, 5, 6, 3, 1 thing like it's got on the calculator. So I have that amount of amps there. Let's have a look at the next one. Distribution board equals V over Z. So 230 divided by 0 0.1644, 0 0.0040, plus 0 0.025 equals, so we'll put all that in the calculator again, 230 divided by, open bracket, just move over here, sorry, 0 0.01644, plus 0 0.0040 plus 0 0.025 close brackets equals 5061 5061.6 amps now if we have a look over here we started off at 13,990 amps we went down to 11,000 252.4 and now we've moved down to 5061 at the end of the day what I'm trying to show you is as we get further away from the graph and we look over here we end up and this is my main switchboard and this is a distribution board we actually get less fault current all right so five sorry that's 5061 not 50 sorry 5000 amps 61.6 amps so the current is actually dropped as we got further away. On some, depending on how the zeros are set up, like this one has point two zeros and this one has one zero, it can actually create, if you have an extra zero or point down, it'll actually make the current drop down quite further. If you look under the um, SIR book, and that's the only place you'll find it for the Victoria, the minimum size circuit breakers are wear ladder in Victoria is 6KA. And if you look at this, this actually comes under the 6KA. But the idea is to show you that when you look at your circuit breaker and you've got the 20 amp on there and a 6KA or a 10KA, they all, that's the rating or the KA rating we get on our circuit breakers. On HRC fuses, which are made of ceramic, which are really high um, breakdown voltage and all that stuff on current, they will go to about 80KA. All right, and the difference is because you've got ceramic, a ceramic casing versus a, basically you're looking at a coffee cup versus a plastic cup. Well, a plastic cup's gonna melt with a lot more heat quickly compared to a bloody ceramic cup. A ceramic cup, you can hold a torch to it. Yeah, it might crack, but it won't melt, all right? Anyway, I hope that's helped you with this for the um, LET question. I'm gonna do one on voltage drop and also another one on the graph, all right? And study works with the questions. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.